clay renders can be a fantastic way to demonstrate the geometry of your designs without the distraction of lighting and materials. They can also be an amazing way to show off a render that you've done with a before and after. In fact, Keyshot themselves celebrate this with their Clay to Keyshot series on Instagram. In this quick video, I'll show you how to make a clay render for both a product and interior shop. And as always, if you're looking to level up your Keyshot renders, or grab some resources to speed up your workflow, be sure to check out our ready to render resources over at moment.co.uk. For the product shot, I'm gonna use this scene I've got with a Hasselblad X1D. I'll note that I've only got one camera, one environment, one model set at this point, and one studio tying it all together for the final image that you see here. To do the clay render, I'm actually gonna duplicate the model set so I'm not altering the shot that I've already done. So I'm gonna right click the model set here, duplicate, and the new model set that's created, I'm gonna make sure that it's named clay. Now we've got our model set, we can look at the material. So in the material library, I'm gonna select materials and the material we'll use is gonna be interior diffuse white. That is literally just a very light gray diffuse material. Diffuse materials don't have any sharp reflections, a very, very simple like paper material. Once you've found that interior diffuse white, you're going to click and drag that. Now you're not going to click and drag it and put it onto the camera because that is going to replace one of the materials that's already on there and it will link it to all the other geometry. So we are going to be affecting our main shot if we do this. Instead of dragging it to the camera, we're going to come over and drag it onto the geometry that we want to select in the scene tree over here. So when I drag it on there, the reason for doing that is it's going to unlink it. So our first model set, if I deselect this one and select the other one, is still going to be in its full rendered material. But our clay now has been completely replaced with our clay material in there. Now for lighting the scene, I'm only using HDRI lighting. You can see my HDRI in here. And I have a couple of options for how I want to proceed. The first one would be just duplicating this. I'll call it clay one. And then instead of having this dark gray background, typically we would go with something like a very light gray to match the clay. So my background color, I could just start increasing up until I get to a light gray. With doing this option, I am still using the pins here, i.e. I get shadows in the same place that they'll be when it finally renders out in there. Your other option for the clay render is to have non-directional lighting, which will basically just give you the ambient occlusion of your model, which can be quite good in some shots, especially when you've got very dramatic lighting like we have here. To do that, just make a new environment, and then in the HDRI editor, just change the background color all the way up to white. So this is gonna give you lighting from all directions evenly spread around the model, leaving you with just the geometry. Very, very clear. Now, the last thing I'll point out is the image style, the Hasselblad image style I had was in photographic mode. I'm gonna make a new image style and call that clay two, and then just check that I'm happy with the contrast here. I'll again use photographic mode for the clay render. And then for the background color, I can actually go down to layers and use background color. That lets me lock in the exact value I want for the background color, which can match the clay if I want to, or have it a little bit brighter. Now we have our clay render finished. I'm happy with what I see on screen. I can add this as a studio. I'm gonna name the studio clay, and I'm gonna enable image style and model sets for the two clay that I've got in there. So now in this scene, I can toggle between the full rendered version of the camera and the clay shot that we've just created. Now with interior scenes, making clay renders is more or less the same. However, you don't wanna put the clay material on the glass. The easiest way I've found to do this is to go to your scene tree, go to the materials tab, and find any materials that are glass. In our interior scenes, we don't use glass solid, we just use the basic glass material. So there's my window glass material in that tab. I can then right click, select parts with material, and that'll select all the parts that are that window glass material. I can then right click all of those, add to group, and I'm just gonna put them in structure. I might add a new group actually and call it Windows. Click OK. So now we have the Windows folder and Modern Scandi Living, which is the rest of the interior. Same as before, go to your material library, search for interior diffuse white, and I can drag that onto the rest of the room. Now with interior lighting, again, you have more or less the same choices. I have an environment here with a HDRI outside, which is pumping natural sunlight into this scene. I could quite easily just duplicate this, go to settings, and instead of having the lighting environment outside where you can see the actual HDRI, I could just choose to go with a solid color and bring that color down 
to match the exposure or the brightness of the interior. You can see it's getting very bloomed out there. Your other option, again, is to create a new environment. And on this new environment, just go to your HDRI editor, find the background, set it to color, and then change that color to a white or gray. Okay. In this case, you're going to get that ambient occlusion, that light coming in evenly through all the windows. You won't get any direct sunlight coming in if you're using that. I think I'm going to opt to go for the HDRI with the white outdoor instead of the visuals. And then in the image tab, again, I'm going to make a new image style. I'm going to put it in photographic mode. Exposure for me in this case is going to be about five or six for this scene. Make sure my denoise is on. And then to make sure that it's black and white and not influenced by the warmth or the coolness of the environment, I'm just going to go to the color drop down, enable it, and turn the saturation all the way down. I can then increase the contrast if I want to, just to get it right. And that's it. How to make a clay render for a product shop and a clay render for an interior shop. Hopefully you found that easy to follow. Hopefully you found that helpful. And I look forward to seeing your clay to key shot shots on Instagram soon.